I've been getting a lot of fan art lately, so I wanted to shout some of it out. I'm going to display a piece of fan art in the corner of each video for the entirety of the video. A little information about it can be found in the description. Thanks to Lily Doodles for this piece. Anyways, it's been a little while since I've done a Mormon video. I don't want to let my ex-Mormon fans down, so get ready for this Five Mormon beliefs that are seriously cool. Let's get into it. People all over the world have debated back and forth about what Mormons really believe. So what draws people to a faith that's often misunderstood and sometimes peculiar? Often misunderstood? Sure, I guess I can get on board with that. I used to think all kinds of crazy sh about Mormons before I actually understood what their beliefs were. Although I really wasn't that far off. I'd heard from some insider Jehovah's Witness sources, who are 100% reliable, by the way, that Joseph Smith found some glowing rocks and some golden tablets. And he used the glowing rocks as makeshift glasses to read the golden tablets. It sounded ridiculous at the time, but when you think about it, it really isn't that far off from what they actually believe. They believe he found a set of rocks with some golden plates, and eventually he lost the rocks which came with the plates, and he used his own rock he found in a well when he was a kid. He threw the rock in his hat, put his face in, and recited what he claimed to be the Book of Mormon. Okay, we're like 15 seconds in, and I'm already getting off on a tangent. Let's continue. Like many other religions, Mormons believe that we are all spiritual children of God and that we can talk to God through prayer. But we don't believe this is a one-way conversation. Everyone can receive answers to prayers in many different forms. Now hold up, he just said it's a two-way street. So that means you talk to God and he talks back, right? I'm just clarifying here because if you actually hear God talking back to you, then we've got a problem. And if you mean that in some amorphous sense, then he doesn't really talk back at all, does he? Or there isn't a verifiable way of knowing if it's really him talking back. But you guys seem pretty serious about this. Let's continue. The direct influence of God in our lives is called personal revelation. And we can rely on this constantly. I can't just let this personal revelation thing go. Let's talk about Mormon's perspective on personal revelation, shall we? The two main scriptures they use in support of their belief in personal revelation are Revelation 19.10 and Numbers 11.29. A lot of the time Christians like taking things out of context, so let's get the whole context behind the verses. The important part behind Revelation 19.10 is at the end, so let's read the entire verse. It says, At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Okay, so I'm reading this verse to mean that the Spirit of God inhabits somebody and gives them the ability to prophesy. That doesn't really say anything about every person on the planet being gifted with that talent. Okay, now for the numbers verse. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Well, that just seems to me like a famous person with a special gift claiming that he wished everybody had that special gift. It doesn't say anything about aforementioned people having said gift. In fact, it kind of argues against anybody else having it. So I don't really buy this whole, the Bible supports personal revelation sh**. Okay, moving on. Mormons have a completely unpaid ministry in local congregations. Every position in the church, from the bishop to the teachers, is voluntarily filled by members who have other jobs and responsibilities the rest of the week. Missionaries travel to almost every country for 18 months to two years and pay out of pocket to serve the communities they are sent to. Mormons around the world actively participate in the community and church services, all without compensation. Oh, I have plenty to say about their money. Interestingly enough, the members are unpaid by the church. That's true. But the church has an interesting setup regarding money. They have a meeting hall where they hold their regular service, and then they have a temple. And the temple is where the baptisms and marriages and other life events take place. If you don't get into the temple, you basically aren't Mormon. As a side note, black people weren't allowed into the temples until the 1970s. Because they were black. It was 100% a race thing. So there's that. Anyways, like I was saying, you need a temple recommend to get into the temple, and that's basically like a slip of paper that your bishop gives you after you've caught your tithings up. That means you have to pay the Mormon church 10% of your yearly income to be Mormon. They're pretty serious about it. So the individual members are being bled dry by the Mormon church with all this quote-unquote volunteer work. And to borrow a line from Mark Twain, they invite this poor abused slave to support them financially too. 
We believe in trying to serve others the way that Jesus did, whether they're members of our faith or not. Oh, that almost slipped past me. Apparently, there are some Mormon charities and things, but just like with a lot of other religions, I have serious doubts about their motives. Do they just help people and then move on, or do they coerce them into hearing a sermon before they receive the help? There are signs for which we can look to see if they're doing it out of genuine concern or if they're trying to bring new people in. I don't know, maybe I'm being too critical. I just know Jehovah's Witnesses don't have any charities or relief work. When Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana, I remember a bunch of people in my hall signed up to go there and rebuild other Jehovah's Witnesses' houses. They weren't there to help anybody else. So maybe I'm cynical about religious relief work now. Either way, we can't establish their motives, so I'm staying skeptical. As Christians, Mormons believe in the Bible written by prophets called of God to lead his people. But doesn't God love his children just as much now as he did in the Old and New Testament? God has not gone silent. He still provides guidance through his prophets on the earth today. This helps us navigate the unique challenges that society faces now. Oh, you have living prophets who make proclamations in God's name. Well, let's see what some of the past prophets have communicated for God, shall we? Their living prophet, Brigham Young, in the Journal of Discourses, Volume 2, pages 13 to 14, said that men should be happy to give their wives to the prophet. What an odd thing for God to communicate to people. He also said that black people will never receive the priesthood until every son of Adam is brought to earth. Was it divinely inspired? Everybody seemed to think so until the 70s. And suddenly it just gets reversed. Either God said it or he didn't. Which is it? John Taylor says that the descendants of Cain, who they believed to be black people, survived the flood so Satan had a representation on earth. Oregon Pratt said, if people don't believe in polygamy, then they'd turn dark as midnight. Come to think of it, there are a lot of quotes about black people here. I wonder if there's meaning behind that pattern. One of the most comforting doctrines of Mormonism is that we don't believe in a hell of fire and brimstone, or that God sorts souls into a heaven or hell. We believe there will be a perfect combination of mercy and justice together, not eternal suffering. We also believe the gospel will be shared beyond the grave, and those who did not get the chance to learn of Christ or believe in him will be given the chance to learn. Oh really? That's important to me because the main thing I look for in a religion is how comforting it is to me. Nothing to do with facts or evidence. And on that note, I want to point something out here. Let's listen to what he said one more time. Work is done in temples across the world in the hope that those who have passed on will choose to accept Christ. That line was buried in there pretty deep. What they're talking about here is their practice of baptizing the dead. They basically go to the temple, which is impossible for outsiders to access, and they get proxy baptized for people who've already died. Then, supposedly, the dead person has a choice from that moment to get into super VIP heaven or to stay in the smoker's lounge, to borrow a term from Brother Jake, a fantastic ex-Mormon YouTuber. Shout out to Brother Jake, by the way. You guys should totally check his channel out. He's fantastic and deserves way more views and subscribers. I get a lot of my info on Mormons from him, and hopefully sometime in the near future we'll be doing a collaboration together. We'll see. Anyways, a link to his channel is in the description. Okay, back to it. Families are not meant to last till death do you part, but forever. We believe that through the love and power of God, that families can be together in this life and in the next. Marriage takes place in Mormon temples, which we believe to be the Lord's house on earth. Having an eternal family is the ultimate blessing that we strive to achieve. Yeah, they have some odd beliefs on marriage. If your spouse dies, you can get remarried in the temple, but who do you stay married to in the afterlife? The answer is both. Polygamy is acceptable in the afterlife, apparently, whether the women were willing participants or not. If your wife dies and you get remarried, your first wife gets to share you with your second wife while you rule over a planet. Super VIP heaven gets kind of weird like that. All I'm saying is these five quote-unquote cool things about Mormonism has some very strange wrinkles to them. But of course they aren't going to tell you that in this promotional propaganda video. In many ways they're a lot like Jehovah's Witnesses, but there are some key differences. It's so hard to tell if one of their beliefs is objectively stranger than another. But I'm going to say the idea of super VIP heaven where you rule over a planet is kind of f weird. Some other weird ones include, but are not limited to, the belief that Jesus touched some rocks and that made them glow forever. They're still glowing somewhere. They also believe that some people mounted them to the front of ships and sailed to America, guided by the light from these rocks, a millennia before Europeans actually made it here. Then when they arrived, they did a bunch of Jesus sh**. 
for him, writing books and whatnot. They just have some weird beliefs, and they don't talk about that in this video, so I felt it was important to mention. Anyway, so that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Twitter, Patreon, and Facebook. And join my Discord. Thanks for watching, guys.